welcome to Frog, Frog Lane Farm in uh, rural Cheshire. This is where Agrimagined has been carrying out trials of our volcanic rock dust branded as Reviver Soil and uh, the, some of the trial material we're using called Reviver Soil K which has a higher potassium content and what we, we have on my left is lots of different varieties of potatoes which have got different types of rock dust, different types of artificial fertilizer um, so that we can control what difference it's made. So where we have traditional artificial fertilizer we can compare the growth of the potatoes with those with the ones that have re reviver soil. Some of them have reviver soil plus farmyard manure and we can try and compare those as well. Sadly we've not had enough rain to make a visible difference or not enough of a visible difference I think for you to pick it up on uh, on a video suite there but um, Andrew Ollier who f lives and farms here tells me that he can see a slight difference in the health of the plants in that the ones with just fertilizer the leaves are beginning to wilt a little bit and they're not quite as tall whereas with, with the, the rock dust with the reviver soil the leaves are, are standing much more firmly and the plants are slightly higher and this is a, an event that was launched last year to, to demonstrate to potato farmers different varieties of potatoes so I can see Maris Piper potatoes in front of me and to my left and there are different varieties further on and we've uh, We've tagged along this year to launch Reviver Soil and to, to tell the farmers about what, what it is and the benefits of it. We have a, a pile of Reviver Soil dust behind me and we've got a few smaller samples of uh, the Reviver Soil K materials and I've been talking to lots of farmers this morning about the locations where they come from what the differences are and the different rock types and what we're what we're doing with Newcastle University in terms of uh, technical advice and particularly on the carbon capture side of things <music>
Uh, you're seeing definite results here, yeah? We are, certainly with the wet, hot weather, we could, I, I can see the crops, the, the, obviously the bigger in there, they're a lot healthier because they've had them. All they've had is a variety of soil which has been mixed into the bare that planting. I would have thought it's allowing to release the nutrients within the soil and obviously there's a lot of nutrients within the soil which has just not been utilised, it's all been locked up. We are historically quite a high P and K farm, uh, soil into threes and fours, if not fives, and it's all there. It's free fertiliser, we're just not utilising it. So it's how we get that fertiliser out without, without chucking more at it. What we have in the large pile at the back, this is, this is our standard approved Reviver Soil Rock Dust screened through the quarry mesh at four millimeters and finer so you may see some longer particles than four millimeters in length but they're very narrow long and thin so as long as they'll go through a four by four millimeter hole they get into the product that's fine and this is the material that contains a full range of nutrients and micronutrients nutrients everything from silicon which is the main uh, main element present right the way down to trace elements and micronutrients that we're measuring in parts per million things like boron cobalt copper zinc and all the things that plants need to thrive and to flourish so the first part of it is basically to explain the process okay of, of what we're trying to achieve with with the, the rock dust so here's the quarry they do the processing ends up in a bag for example or a truck spread it on the land we can absorb co2 and we get a good crop that's the object of the exercise on the back here we explain the carbon capture mechanism what is actually happening that's Newcastle University are heavily involved in that because they are explaining to us what we do okay. um, and then these are the key elements that we've got in the rock dust but that is the key bit for the plant the silica okay and that that's what makes the plants grow and everything else so fantastic for grains cereals grasses because of the improving the stem cell etc on there not not necessary with all the vegetables if you've got a vegetable on the stem yes that's the key to it all and people in Queensland are using it on sugar cane very successfully now in these days that we're, we're living in at the moment where the price of fertilizer chemical fertilizer has really gone through the roof from something like a few a few 200 pounds maybe at the end of last year up to more like 750 or more we're looking at other rock types which might contain potassium and what what i have in in this bag is a very fine flower from a slate quarry and we've tested this one it doesn't contain as wide a range of micronutrients um, but it does contain a much higher level of potassium so this one could be the sort of useful material that a farmer could could spread um, particularly if he's a potato farmer or a maize farmer where potassium is particularly important to those types of crops to reduce the amount of chemical fertilizer that he needs to put on it and it's less than a hundred pounds per ton for this compared to maybe 750 or more for a chemical fertilizer you can see that multiple applications of this can be applied to the soil to do a part of the job and if it just reduces the amount of conventional fertilizer that he that he needs to use by 20 or 25 percent there's a clear financial saving there for him uh, as well as any additional micro tra trace elements that might be in there as well there might not be as much in this as there is in the dollarite in the standard reviver soil 
but there will be some and every little helps it's spread with that. and it's spread with the machine behind us over there which is a I believe a 1950s bedford truck not all lime spreaders use a machine as old as that one but what we we were interested to find with this was that particularly for the very fine flour that this machine was capable of, of spreading the machine in the, the dust without it clogging up in the back without it flying up into the air and blowing for five miles down the road and landing on somebody else's field instead of yours um, just by calibrating the gap in the, the machine and the speed of the rotors he was able to spread this material this material no matter whether it was the, the coarser four millimeter and down or the finer one millimeter and down he was able to successfully apply it to to the ground and that was a one of the first things we needed to prove uh, having a very very fine powder you can imagine if it's a very windy day it could quite easily get up into the atmosphere and go where you really don't want it